It's your favorite kind of episode. It's kind of also my favorite kind of episode. Today, a transfer special. Season 2 concluded last week, and today, a new era at Tokyo 23 begins. Yes, folks, how is it going? I hope you guys had a lovely weekend. We are back here in Football Manager, and to kick things off today, we have, well, the end of season review for the season that we concluded as of last episode. And of course, it was a season that reached a dramatic conclusion as not only did we win the Kanto League for a second year in a row, not only did we manage to scrape through as the best second place team in the regional final stage, when it came to the championship stage, we turned it up a notch. Plus 15 goal difference, three wins in three. I don't think anyone can say we didn't deserve to go up. And of course, the JFL promotion playoff final is also going on at the moment. Our Nankatsu gonna follow us up. Uh, I really hope they're not going to. They're quite good. But of course, before we worry about Nankatsu and next year and get into some transfer business, let's talk about the season that was, starting with the transfers that we made last year. There have been some pretty big contributors in our season. Of course, Jun Nakajima won signing of the year. 13 goals, 14 assists for the left midfielder. He has been a very, very good player, has quickly become a fan favourite as well. In terms of my own personal biased favourite, uh, Akai is my favourite. Now, I know, I promised I was going to give Akai a new face and I didn't do it last week. I'm going to go do it now. And if you were wondering, Jack, did you just forget to update his face? Yeah, uh, this is the current face in the face pack. Here is how he looks now. It's like he's a Pokemon that's evolved. Okay, I think I've set that all up correctly. I know people were very upset that I didn't update his face. I I've done it now. Forgive me. There you go. For everyone who was upset at the new Sharrod Akai face. He looks a lot more intimidating now. Also, he looks quite memeable. He's got a very memey just persona. I think it's the smile. Anyway, Akai has been absolutely phenomenal. Another player who really chipped in this year and was good was Otsuka. I feel like with Akai and Otsuka, they're the kind of players that if I do find another striking option out there, they could fall down the pecking order. I do feel like Yuichi Otta is just that step above. Equally, though, with this winter transfer window coming up, there is a lot of interest in Oka. In fact, you can see here, there is interest from the Singapore Premier League and Tampines, Tam Tampines, I think is how it's said. Uh, either way, yeah, they want our player. They're going to have to bid a lot if they want him. They've got three million in the bank, though. So, you know, Singapore money, come, come on down. I'll take it. Of course, in terms of transfer fees spent this year, Watanabe was the big transfer, but he really turned it on, especially in the last few games. Five goals, 14 assists, 7.4 rating. I think it's safe to say he was a signing that made the difference come the end of the year. In terms of the end of season result, of course, great to do well in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1 and win it for a second year in a row. In the Ichihara Cup, we kind of threw it because I wanted to focus on promotion. The Tokyo Cup, we, we will still be in, but because we've got an upper division now, we might enter it at a slightly later stage. So that'll be good. Uh, yeah, this is a competition where it's all the teams in Tokyo, but if you're one of the big boys, you enter later. So it's a little bit less in the way of games for us to worry about in the season. Of course, saying all of that, we're going to be in the JFL next year, which is Japan's fourth tier. We're going to have more league games in that. Good to see the club reputation hop up by half a star. Revenue on the whole was up as well. I'm going to hope that is going to continue to be on the rise going into next year. Not only because we're in a little bit of debt, but also because, well, I imagine we're going to have to spend a little bit more money if we want to be successful. Otter won the fans player of the year, young player of the year. Didn't get signing of the season because, of course, he joined us last year. But uh, safe to say, when you look at the record breakers, he broke quite a few records alongside Watanabe, who got the most assists, and also Matsuzawa in goal who got the most clean sheets. That was an astronomically bar, low bar set for clean sheets, but nevertheless, he beat it. Don't think he's going to be our first choice next year. In an ideal world, we find a new goalie. We've gained 100 followers on social media. That is some great news. In terms of the board expectations, they expect a mid-table finish in the JFL. They also want me to repair the club's financial damage. Uh, yeah, the vibe seems to be mid-table in the JFL. I'd like to think we can compete at the top. I feel like there is not actually a big difference between the fourth tier and fifth tier, but because of how competitive, obviously, the promotion campaigns uh, between the kind of fifth and fourth tier are, you get a lot of really good teams in Div Division 5 who are probably better than the lower half teams in Division 4. I feel like that kind of happens in the National League in real life in England. Uh, hopefully, that's going to continue to be the case. Another thing I'm hoping is going to get better is the finances. Uh, last year, we were in a little bit of debt. We peaked at, I believe, negative £150,000. We're already 50% worse off 
right now than we were back then. In terms of the wages and transfer budget, the board have actually sent me some decent money for the year. There is a significant amount of wage budget to spend. In fact, we've got about, what, £4,000 to spend on players this summer? So even if we've not got a load of money to spend, in terms of the actual bank balance, Probably going to be looking to strengthen the squad with free agents. For the end of season meeting, I'm just going to tell the players we can get mid-table. Uh, I feel like telling them anything more than that is probably going to be a little much. They're happy with that, and uh, I'm going to just tell them all. Have a lovely summer, winter break. I keep saying summer. I'm so used to playing in England where the summer is the off-season. Obviously, it's not the case here in Japan. Anyway, I do feel like a mid-table finish in the JFL is pretty achievable. You can see at the board's kind of culture. It's not really changed since last year, in all honesty. We are now on our end of season break. The players players come back in a little over a month's time, I think I'm also going to come back around then. Of course, the Japanese preseason extends really all the way into April. The transfer window for us actually opens on the 2nd, but I kind of want to get to the season tick over date, which I believe is going to be around this beginning of preseason. So whenever we get promoted to the JFL officially and the rep gets updated and all that jazz, I'm going to be back. I might try and get a couple of transfers just sorted early if the right players become available, but I think for the sakes of the video, entertainment and all that, rather than you watch me play a month and a half, I'm just going to snap my fingers and I'm going to be in the future. So, uh, Editing Jack, please work your magic. And, well, here we are. Yes, it's the 8th of January in game. In fact, preseason hasn't quite started yet, but the league and stuff has updated. We are officially a JFL club. And here is the lie of the land. It is a 16-team division. You play each other twice. Top team gets promoted automatically. Second team goes into a promotion relegation playoff against the team in the league above. The J3 division, might I add. There's some pretty good teams here. At Sendai University, we've met before, of course, uh, they can't be promoted because university teams can't play in the J3 and above because that's the professional men's league. Kind of makes sense, really. Now, first things first, in terms of media prediction right now, predicted to finish 11th. Considering that 16 teams in the division, it's technically outside the relegation zone. Nevertheless, we definitely need to improve the team. Have already started to work towards that. Uh, I don't know about anyone else. In Football Manager, I don't always pay attention to the news screen, but very occasionally you kind of get rumors and stuff. I realize here, I'm looking at the Tokyo 23 news specifically. If I go to the general world news here, I don't know if anyone else does this. I find myself just kind of flicking through random players. Finding players. Look, this guy would be this guy would be a good signing, wouldn't he? Uh, he's no chance he's gonna join us. Nevertheless, occasionally you obviously get good news inbox items. Sometimes you get good op players offered to you. I've had two players offered to me that I've already decided to sign, as well as Suyuki potentially leaving us. Yeah, we're looking to sell Suyuki. Uh, I've had a bid of £33,000 for him. That's probably a testament to his potential ability. Just as a little reminder, we signed him as a free transfer from a high school team. And at 16, he played a decent amount of football for us. Nevertheless, he has got a big worry when it comes to injuries and inconsistency. £33,000 would be very, very nice to receive. We have already had a little bit of a bump in income as a result of our promotion and, of course, the new season kicking in. You can see here, £200,000 in sponsorships already. And, well, I'm hoping we'll have a bit of fundraising and season ticket revenue slowly, maybe, coming in. Uh, right now, we've made £8,000 from season tickets this month. That's already an improvement on last year. But yes, the balance looks slightly healthier. The balance in terms of transfer and wage budget has not moved because we've not sold anyone, but I have already agreed to sign some players. Two players who were thrown my way, courtesy of Football Manager. The first, Yasuki Yoshikawa. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jack. It's a centre-back with five jumping reach. Yes, 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 it is. Uh, he's not going to play centre-back, or at least that is my plan, because I think when I look at our team, one player who's been a very loyal servant to the club is Sauer. He's a very, very good ball-winning centre-mid, but the reality is at 28 years old, he's probably not going to improve much more than this, and whilst he might be capable of making a step up, I do feel like getting a really good defensive centre-mid would just help us a lot going into next year, especially with the style of football that we play, which I expect to kind of continue to play for the coming year. And for that reason, Yasuki kind of fits the bill. Now, yes, he is going to have to learn to play as a ball winning midfielder, but I actually feel like this is a role that kind of covers up some of the weaknesses when it comes to stuff like his jumping reach kind of nicely. Makes use of his teamwork, makes use of his good stamina and work rate, good strong aspects to his game that wouldn't be really be used at centre-back. Uh, worth noting, he is banned for free domestic league games, so he might be a bit of a nutter. That's something to worry about. But yeah, he has joined us, and if I'm not mistaken, his wages 
are really, really reasonable. Uh, he was on a university contract. Can I see how much I've offered him a week wage-wise? I can't. I know it's a good deal, but it's not as good as this second deal. Once every so often in Football Manager, you sign a player and you think, that's just, it's not a fair signing. This is a signing that's going to make a difference. Masato Takagi, Takagi? Maso, I'll, I'll work on the name. Masako Takagi here is absolutely, he's that guy. He is that guy. Look, he was on £100 a week playing for Hokkaido University. I was looking at some of their other key players after he was thrown my way. I don't think they're as good as him. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, I think these guys do actually consider joining me, although they do kind of want an arm and a leg. But what made Masato stand out above the rest is not only his crazy physicals and great overall ability. This guy is a nut striker at 20 years old. I believe he's signing for us for like £200 a week. It might be slightly more or less than that. Um, we'll find out when he officially joins us in February. But it was just one of those transfers where I saw him, saw his demands, panicked and thought, I have to make a bid now. I know I told myself I was going to wait for the reputation to update and stuff, but I need him. I want him. So I went out and signed him. Uh, he is considered our best stri striker in terms of star rating. If I just compare him to Otter... He's kind of like Otter's bigger brother. He's, he, I feel like he and Otter are quite similar moulds of players, and whilst they will probably start up top alongside one another, neither of them are particularly good in the air, which might be a little bit of a concern, but, I mean, look at him. Look at, just look at how good he is. This guy's mad, isn't he? Free transfer, university signings, you love to see it. And, of course, it is going to be free transfers that we are looking to make this year. Now, before we get into kind of transfers and stuff, I feel like it would be good to show you the JFL League where... Well, Nankatsu got promoted. Yeah, Nankatsu won their playoff game to end last year. That game, they won 2-1, as you can see. Annoyingly, they have been promoted with us and instantly been made favourites to get promoted out of the JFL immediately, which, I'll be honest, it annoys me slightly. Uh, of course, another team that I've mentioned a few times during videos is this team here, uh, Tochigi City. They used to play in the Kanto League. They were promoted a couple of years ago to the JFL. Their media prediction is third place, and you can see in the Media Dream 11, they have the goalkeeper, this guy here, 18 years old, on £350. They snapped him up from a high school, and what I'm beginning to realise kind of quickly is, especially at this level of football, a lot of the players that are kind of in the Media Dream 11 play for universities or have been signed from universities and are just really bloody good. Like Hamada here, 19 years old, uh, he's a university student, I don't think he wants to join me. Also, with that valuation, I can't afford him. Sendai University actually have a fair few players in the Media Dream 11, but of course, just as a little reminder, they can't be promoted. Uh, Versper here have Suzuki, this guy's 18 years old. They signed him on a free transfer from a high school team. He looks very, very good. And it does feel like at this level, at the very least, Teams just here, there, and everywhere, they basically just sign players from universities and high schools. So I feel like I need to take the hint, and that has to be the focus this year. Now, I have already done a little bit of spring cleaning of the squad, and by spring cleaning, I mean players with contracts expired in 2026. I've just stuck in the B team to think about. There are a few players who are contracted beyond the end of the current kind of contract term. Of course, in Japan, contracts expire at the end of January. And yeah, there are a few more I would like to get rid of. Players like Matsumoto on £350 a week just doesn't really feel smart anymore. And on the flip side, as well as these players who are perhaps paid a little bit too much, uh, Hander, I think another example of that. There are also players who I desperately want to sign new contracts who don't want to sign them. Uh, Watanabe, great example of this, just picked him up, mentioned the fact we spent a lot of money on him right now doesn't want to sign a new contract. That's concerning. Jun Nakajima, player of the year last year. Does he want to sign a new contract? No. And for a player like Nakajima here, who's one of our best players in terms of star ratings, my staff think he's going to be a good player for this division. I'd really like to keep hold of them. So I'm going to hope that if I can make the right additions, maybe players like Yoshikawa and Takaki here are kind of signs of the players we can maybe attract. Maybe I can convince some of our best players to actually stick around. So I have already blocked out a starting 11 for next year with the two new signings that would be coming in to play at striker and centre mid. Here is the team on the whole. I feel like Tamiya became just a cult hero at centre back. Uh, he is a very good player. I am a little bit concerned about how limited he is. I suppose that applies to certain aspects of our team. You know, in the lower levels of any football manager save, I feel like you can really lean into physicals and just certain aspects of players and kind of just play to their strengths and it works. And as you become a more professional club, that kind of doesn't work anymore. You actually need footballers who can do a bit of everything. Doesn't make me a little bit worried for players like Ida as well. I suppose he's the best kind of example of this. At lower levels, he could be great. 
at this level and potentially above, I do worry he might get exploited in the middle. In terms of actual star ratings, if we just look at our starting 11 here, you can see we have the likes of Watanabe, Nakajima, Otter, and of course we've got two new players to come in in the striking and centre mid area who are very, very good and will presumably have good star ratings. The defence is maybe an area of concern. I know Kim has been kind of a standout go-to player for us. I feel like if there's an upgrade on him and Tamiya, maybe that's something we need to do. I feel like Kobayashi is a good little depth player, but equally, maybe there's room to improve there. Another player, I suppose, is Mitsuhashi as well. All these players, very good for our previous division and potentially good enough for the JFL as well. And I suppose the one position where that probably applies the most is to the goalkeeping area because Matsuzawa didn't really impress me last year. Uh, Ataki has got a contract for the coming year. I'm really hoping he'll be the third choice goalkeeper by the end of this episode. Now, just to look at the start of our league season, if you're wondering how soon do we need to be ready, it's actually the end of March in this division. We've got 30 league games to play versus last year, where we had 18, of course. We do also have the Tokyo Cup, where we've been drawn in the quarterfinal against a fellow JFL team. Our first team to take on at the start of the year is Brio Breca. Uh, their key player is Shun Ito, a striker who is in the Media Dream 11. He's 18 years old and he looks quite good. For a little bit of context there, he's on £800 a week. Whereas for ourselves, currently our highest earners are on £500 a week. And to be honest, when you look at the overall kind of quality in our team, the two players on that much maybe shouldn't be on quite that much. It's quite a lot for players who are kind of not in the top few players in the team. Now, in terms of transfer budget, there is a little bit of money to spend. There's also plenty of wage budget surplus too. So we can definitely look to continue to improve the team. And with pre-season kicking off, you can see here, I've already increased our scouting budget. That's where some of the existing kind of transfer budget has gone. Currently, I've got it set to surrounding leagues. There is always the temptation to expand it much further, but you can see when you go from surrounding leagues to, well, the whole of Japan, the price does jump up quite a lot. That's also just dawned on me. I'm just looking at players sorted by world reputation. The top player here is a 41-year-old Egyptian player. Uh, I don't think I need him. I kind of want him, but I, don't, I shouldn't do it. Now, you can already see here, actually, we have got a few players that my scouts have looked at and recommended to me. Uh, the most notable of the free agents is Choi J. Hyok. I've definitely said that incorrectly. 22 years old. He was playing for Anson. I think I maybe even looked at him during the very first transfer window where we, of course, saw a few different South Korean free agents. He, he's not bad. He's just not that good. I do feel like there's a lot of players here that maybe my scouts looked at or my intermediaries offered to me who are serviceable players who maybe last year would have been like obvious players to go, yeah, we need to go sign them. But actually, what a four-star player perhaps was last year is very different to what a four-star player needs to be for us this year. So yeah, some out-of-date scout reports here are probably going to give me some false readings. I am going to quickly set up some recruitment focus bits. I'm also, I think, going to be a bit more general with these. Pick me out any players that fit our current tactical system that are available for transfer and under the age of 23. I feel like that might just be the approach here. I feel like the squad as a whole is well-rounded. I'm just looking for a few star players, but it doesn't really matter where they play. Well, no, that's not true. It does matter where they play. I'm just not going to be that picky. With the exception of centre-back that I've already mentioned and also goalkeeper. I'd like a goalkeeper. A little bit concerned. I've already got my scouts doing quite a lot. We might be waiting a little while to get this recruitment focus started. What we will do in the intermission is just keep a very close eye on any scouting recommendations like Takeshi Nakamura. He's a left wing back and centre mid. He'd probably be an okay left back, but he actually can't play left back at all. And also, he's just not available for free. Does his agent think I could sign him? He does, but I would have to pay him 300 quid. I mean, according to our staff, he's quite a good left wing back. I just he's, I don't think he's what we need. You know, we've got a long preseason. February is when players will actually start to join any us, uh, any players that we decide to sign. So I'm not going to panic into making any decisions or signings too soon. We can we can take our time here. Saying all of that, one good bit of news is for players that were willing to listen to contract offers, I have actually made contract offers. Uh, Watanabe and Nakajima, the two wingers for us, didn't want to sign new deals. Otsuka, though, has just renewed his current contract, £170 a week, all the way through to 2028. So a new two-year deal, and if I'm not mistaken, which I'm not, I can trigger a two-year extension. Not sure if I need to keep him here for four years, but it's good to have that in our back pocket. Hasegawa is no longer happy about the fact I told him he's not a starter anymore. I mean, he never was a starter for us, but I did sign him and promise him that initially. Lowered his playing time to fringe player, where really, he's just a good, versatile winger. He doesn't want to be that good, versatile winger. Uh, can you stop crying, please? Uh, 
I don't believe in you, basically. That's the issue. <laughs> Apparently, he's fine with that. I've had an offer for Otter. Uh, it's £48,000 for him. I kind of want more. I did say that I'd sell him if I got a bid of £55,000, and I didn't think we'd actually get that bid. Uh, I, I've now had that bid. It's locked in. Apparently, he has no interest, though. So apparently not a fan of Singapore. Don't know if that's controversial or not. I was just looking through the news in our current division. Uh, Yamagami here, just signed by Honda. They've spent a lot of money on him. £175,000 for this high school player. I'll tell you what, he's pretty bloody good, isn't he? 18 years old, 16 finishing, some decent physicals as well, on £500. I mean, when you look at it like that, it, it's a good deal. I guess that's a good indicator, isn't it? Teams in this division, they are going to go out there and sign good young players and spend money on them too. Sadly, I don't have the ability to sign money and I do need to sell players in order to maybe afford some players. I was really hoping that Tsuyuki was going to be one of those players because I had sold him, or rather had a bid for him of £33,000. That bid has come in and then he's turned down the contract offer. He didn't want to go back to school. I feel like often with transfer specials, I have kind of certain positions where I think need someone there, need someone there. And I guess the goalkeeping position to an extent is that area of concern. But I don't, I don't, I feel quite calm, like unusually calm. I feel like it's because I feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders with this series, getting it to the JFL alone. And I'm going to hope that this year is going to be straightforward. Maybe that's me just wishing for it to be that right way when really it's not going to be that way. But I feel like I can just, you know, feel a bit deluded, at least for now. I did notice my recruitment team is at full capacity. Uh, I think it might be time to try and sign a new scout, maybe. Don't need them to be good, just need them to be able to actually do assignments for me. I will say, just based on the fact that I'm actually getting people show up here, the quality of staff I can attract to this division is definitely way, way better than what I could attract previously. This guy has some really good knowledge. Can we sign him? Scout, 200 pounds. Yeah, uh, don't mind if I do. 200 pounds, just do it for me. Thank you, Kanishi. Okay, well, hopefully we're gonna be able to find a goalkeeper quicker. I got really excited because I noticed my scouts had actually started to kind of in progress the goalkeeping assignment. They have found a goalkeeper. He's, he's a knee, he's a knee. Waste of time. We've hit that point in preseason nice and early. I'm waiting for the scouts to sort out stuff. The transfer window doesn't officially open until February. I'm now looking at players with at least one international cap just to see if there's anyone interesting. Hiroke Abe here is 26 years old with three caps to Japan. Did he used to play for like, Barca? Yeah, he did. He played for Barcelona. Uh, we'll use the term played for them very loosely. This guy has caps for Japan. What the hell happened? Did he just have injuries? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm, mm, the answer to that is a resounding, yes, he had injuries, uh, many, many injuries. I want to sign him, but I feel like it'd be really stupid. Koya Kitagawa here, another Japanese international, 29 years old, was released by S-Pulse in the J2 division. Prior to that, he was playing in Austria for a little bit, uh, was signed back for an undisclosed fee. He, he doesn't look great, does he? Not what I need. Tell you what, there's a lot of goalkeepers here with caps, isn't there? Uh, an Ivorian goalkeeper, Gabo Huo. I'm definitely not saying that name correctly. He's already decided he's retiring. Probably not a wise signing. Hussein Sharif of M M Maldivian? M what country is this? That was Mold the Maldives. I've never had a player from the Maldives before in Football Manager, and I'm not sure I ever will if they're as good as this. Do I want the Sri Lankan national team goalkeeper? Probably not. I don't know what I was expecting from these players of international caps, but they are all... I'm not going to say they're all awful. They're just not what I need. If at first you don't succeed with international caps, try UFAPs instead, maybe. Uh, at least one youth appearance. There's 12 players. We've got some North Korean regens here playing for high school teams. I don't know if that excites me or terrifies me. This guy's 17 and can play right back. He's quite good and he's wanted. He's wanted by another high school team. Is he better than my current right back? Okay, he's not He's not quite as good as Mitsuhashi, and it might just be because he's from North Korea that I want to sign him, but uh, he, we'll, we'll put him on the maybe pile. Little update on all these players. Uh, they are all crap, including Philip Mango. I really want to sign Philip Mango because of his name. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's just not a good goalkeeper, is he? 
What I'm beginning to realise is maybe just waiting for scouts is the way. I have been getting a few more scout reports in for players like Takahashi, who I was looking at at Hokkaido University. I don't need another striker. A carder here has popped up. He's 29 years old. He's not a bad goalkeeper. I say he's not a bad goalkeeper. He is a massive upgrade on Matsuzawa, but... I don't really want to sign the first goalkeeper that I scout that looks serviceable. I feel like now we're in the JFL, we should have a bit more, well, in the way of players to pick from. Now, one minor concern I have got is staff members with contracts expiring, but I can't really afford to pay them raises at the moment. I'm just going to hope they stick around. It's not like we're at a point where, well, staff members are, well, amazing and irreplaceable. I just need ones I can actually afford. Also, you might spot here, lots of players just being released at the end of their contracts. Perhaps the most notable is Maeda. He was a really good, versatile player. In our first year, he did not play a single game for us in the second season. Otter, by the way, has just got injured to start pre-season. Uh, speaking of which, first game, well, I was going to say first game of pre-season. It's, it's not at all. It's the second game of pre-season. It's the second game as well against J1 opposition. I'm hoping we do better against Yokohama than we did when we lost 3-0. I uh, have a sneaking suspicion we're going to get battered in today's game, but maybe the players can surprise me, uh, or maybe we're going to provide no shocks. We lost 4-0. I love this. Uh, Vortis would like to trial Watanabe. Uh, Vortis, by the way, if we just look at them, a team in J2. I mean, that makes me feel like Watanabe must be really, really good. I don't want to lose Watanabe, but also his contract does expire at the end of the year. Still doesn't want to renew it. I'm not going to offer him out on trial to anyone, but if teams want to make bids, I'll listen to them. Probably needs to be a bid bigger than the 30000 I paid for him, mind you. Oh, and by the way, the transfer window has just opened today. Our two new signings have joined us. Yoshikawa, I immediately now need to train to play centre mid. I feel like this guy is either going to be immense or an absolute waste of space at defensive midfielder. I'm hoping it's going to be the former. Otherwise, we might be playing him at centre-back with his terrible jumping reach. As for Takagi here, I mean, on paper, he looks phenomenal. I'm hoping on the pitch, he's going to look phenomenal too. He's basically just a straight upgrade on Otter. This guy might be the reason I'm willing to sell Otter this year. Um, with both these players, by the way, they've signed one-year deals, but I can just immediately trigger contract extension. So that we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> and Takagi didn't like the fact that I just triggered that extension. Of course he didn't. I've been told there's something on your mind at the minute. I'm really disappointed you triggered my contract extension clause. The standard of the squad isn't good enough. I need to leave. You join today. You literally, this is like the, you know, the Grandpa Simpson in the Simpsons episode where he kind of walks into the club, sees Bart and immediately walks out at the door. Uh, I don't want to lose you. What's he going to take to, he wants to, he wants to, he just wants to leave. Uh, I'm not going to actually try and sell you, but you have my word. I won't stand in your way if a reasonable bid comes in. What's a reasonable bid? He thinks 28k. I'm thinking 100k. He, he, I don't want to lose you. I'm just going to escalate it. He can't believe the way I've treated him. Mate, you literally joined today and started crying. What a weirdo. I mean, I wanted to trigger the contract extension on Yoshikawa, but now, now I'm scared. I, I, you know, I'll do it later. I mean, on paper, this team looks absolutely phenomenal. But Takagi here, who I think will actually play as a pressing forward for us. I, I, I mean, I don't know what to expect or think of this bloke now. I thought he looked amazing on paper. Turns out he's a bloody diva. Right, you know what? We'll reject that trial offer for Watanabe. <laughs> just not ideal, is it? Now, there are some players who are in the first team right now, like Handu, who I think I'm just going to demote to the B team. Players who I'm never going to use this coming year don't really justify their wages. Same with Matsumoto. Maybe, you know, by demoting them down a team, uh, maybe trying to offer them out, I can just cash in on them. Not necessarily looking to sell them or wanting to sell them. Ma well, no, I do want to sell them massively. I feel bad because they started at the club, but they're, you know, the Tokyo FC originals. But with respect to a lot of these guys who were at the team when I first came in, they're just not good enough. You know, it's all like Fukumoto, not a bad player, but he's unhappy at the moment. He wants to start more. I can't give him that. So I'm just going to demote him down to the B team. And to be honest, now as I start to demote some of these unhappy players and sort out the squad a little bit more, Gives me a better idea of where we maybe need to add some strength in depth. Uh, I'm looking at the centre-back and wing-back area. Might be useful. My scouts are currently looking at centre-backs, you can see here. Uh, there is one player who actually has some pretty good potential uh, and good ability. Uh, Kikui, probably not saying that correctly. 13 jumping reach, decent aerial ability. He's got really good positioning, marking, and 15 tackling for this level is mad. He's 18 years old. 
and he's just left high school. Uh, he wants to be a breakthrough prospect. I'll tell you what, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. We might have just found our depth option immediately. I probably shouldn't sign the first bloke I see, but I'm, I'm desperate for him to sign for us now. Let's hope that we can get this done. Am I mad? I feel like Kento here is just really, really good. Obviously, compared to Tamir, he's not got like the mental physicals or anything, but the bloke can defend and it's just a depth centre-back option who could play right back in an emergency. I mean, it's good, isn't it? Sugawara here is one of our backups. Of course, he started the year as our starting centre-back. I feel like these two are pretty good depth for us if we can get the deal done. Obviously, I've got Ch Kajitsuka as well, who's another decent centre-back, although he leans more on the physical side of things. I feel like just having one of those centre-backs who's really good at tackling, not the quickest, not the craziest in the air, but knows how to defend, something that we lack. My scouts have got more recommended players here based on star rating. Uh, there's a few actually here who I think are new. Nonaka is the best of the bunch. He looks good, doesn't he? 21 years old. Where was he playing before? He's playing at university. He's been released as a freebie. I mean, he's got 15 acceleration, 16 finishing, decent off the ball, decent composure. How much does he want? He wants to be a star player. He's got five career goals so far. He wants £650. That's just too much. Uh, mm. Not a fan of that. Just for a bit of context, you know Takagi here, I mentioned I wasn't sure how much I'd paid him. For £150 a week, I'm paying him. No wonder he's unhappy I've extended his contract. If I can get a guy this good for £150, even though we've got the excess wage budget, because of our overall balance, I don't really want to spend the wage budget if I don't have to. And I feel like signing youngsters for £500 is something I don't have to do. My scouts are looking at some younger players here. Iwanaga is very highly rated. 18 years old, defensive mid, who can play centre-back and centre-mid. I mean, he's the kind of player who looks really good, but I don't really want to be spending money on players. And for the kind of transfer fee I'm going to have to pay to sign him, just it's not a good use of the non-existent money I have. My scouts do have some players they are actively recommending. Nakamura is one of them. We've already looked at him today. Mishima is another, 21 years old, slightly older centre-back, has 17 jumping reach and crazy height. I mean, I thought I'd already found a centre-back that I wanted to sign. I kind of just want to sign this guy for the jumping reach. And I can't afford him. Never mind. I'm looking at goalkeepers here, sorted by world reputation. There's a lot of kind of backup players who were previously playing in J1, J2, who are available. I'll be honest, in terms of their actual ability, I am very, very thoroughly underwhelmed but it does make me wonder if just by searching by world reputation if i might be able to find some semi-decent players definitely not an efficient scouting method i'm just sorting players by world rep here and i'm just i'm just gonna scout all the players near the top that just you know what might as well feel like i'm trying to do something okay i don't know what to do here i uh, would love to know your thoughts down below call to action you know engage with the video leave a like while you're down below would you take this deal watanabe running down his contract to our star player it has to be said but his contract's up at the end of the current year i signed him for thirty-five thousand pounds some of that was based on installments i've had a bid here of well potentially forty-eight thousand pounds from vortis uh vortis by the way are the team that previously offered him a trial and i laughed at them now they want to buy him uh, they're a j2 team who have a really healthy bank balance they are a very very good team I feel like they've got to have a bit more money than this. Uh, I kind of want to ask for £100,000, but I know it's probably going to piss them off, but I feel like it's just worth a chance. I mean, they've, they've not laughed at me, which is good. Ultimately, Watanabe is one of our star players, and I don't really want to sell our star players, but if I can get £90,000 for him and a decent sell-on, it's just it's one of those things where I kind of just have to take it. I think I'm actually willing to take a slightly smaller initial fee if I can get a decent percentage of profit on the sell-on because I think Watanabe will inevitably go for more. Final bid they've locked in here is, well, just about £60,000 up front. There's various installments here, but even just £60,000 with a 30% profit of sell-on. I hate this. It's not something I ever really want to do, but given the fact I'm probably going to just lose Watanabe on a free anyway, I think I have to sell him. I, I need the money. If I sell him, maybe there's another good winger option out there. That's what I'm thinking. I don't, uh, I don't know if I like this sale. Uh, like I said, let me know down below. Felt like this transfer special was kind of just plodding along. You know, not loads of drama, not too much crazy stuff happening in the first part of the summer transfer window. That bid has really kind of blown things wide open. I've been invited to a Japan trial day. Uh, I'm going to scout all these players. I've got a very long list of players we're currently scouting. I probably should just 
kind of look through these guys manually. Maybe some of them are good, although based on the few I've clicked on here, uh, I don't think they are actually good. I mean, Sakamoto is not awful. Just not really what I need. There's a few new players actually on this list of players that my scouts are uh, recommending. Some younger players as well here. Satoru, I was hoping, was going to be a little bit better than he is. There's a few more though. Uh, Toyoda was another player here who are 18 years old. He looks very good. He's just left high school. He's definitely more of a creative player. Could he be a creative center mid? Maybe the advanced playmaker in our system, dare I say? Could I train? Could he be the Eda replacement? If I compare him with Eda, is he better? I mean, he's not as quick and he's not got as good of a vision, but he is also 18 years old and he only just turned 18. How much does he want a week? Okay, he wants to be a star player. He wants 500 pounds. I mean, I can kind of afford it, but the fact he can't play centre mid means it's just a bit of a no-go. So Tsui here is 18 years old and a left midfield option. Not actually bad at all. How much might you want? Wants to be an important player. It's a tiny bit concerning. Will he take squad player? No, he wants £700. I tell you what, the high school kids, they, they have mental wage demands. That's what I'm learning. This guy looks good. Yosuke... Kamori, he was another player in this list, by the way. I feel like I need to go through this whole list. Apparently, he only has three-star ability. I think that's a load of poppycock. He's one of the better players we've looked at. We're losing Watanabe. Could he be the Watanabe replacement? I don't want to get too excited and talk him up too much, but when you compare him with Watanabe, there's some similarities. There's some differences. He's 18, wants to be an important player, and wants to be an inside forward, which we, we don't play with. Only wants £210 a week. I might have found my Watanabe replacement. I'm actually tempted to just offer him £300 here to try and guarantee his signature and to stop another team coming in. He said here these terms are acceptable, but I wish to evaluate my options. There's like a certain line you can get players to say, which means they pretty much are guaranteed to accept an offer no matter what. I feel like if I can sign Kamori here, I don't mind selling Watanabe, so I just want him to say the line. I'm happy to go up to £400. And th this is the line. I've hit my microphone with excitement. If a player says that's a good offer, I'm very happy with it. And you hit finalize offer. As soon as you hit continue once, the player will sign for you no matter what. So if you ever just want to guarantee a signing, and it doesn't matter if there's teams that are way higher division wise than you, if you can get a player to say that line, they will sign for you. Often it means overpaying. Of course, Kamori only wanted £200 a week. But if I have to pay £400 to guarantee this guy's signature, I think it's absolutely worth it. I feel like I've I found the Watanabe replacement. It took like two minutes. I'm surprised that just happened. Also, I have still got all these recruitment focuses going on. Are there any good, you know, new exciting players here? Iwanaga, uh, I've already, of course, looked at. Can't afford him. Goalkeepers, there's no goalkeepers. Center backs, we're still kind of looking at them. Kamori has now joined for us, has the potential to be a J3 player. Already, though, a very, very good player. Um, he is also right-footed. A bit weird that he wanted to be an inside forward on the right-hand side, given that. He ticks a lot of boxes. He's actually a really good winger. Um, I think what the logical thing to do now is to try and offer out Watanabe and try and get a little bit more for him. If Watanabe is going to be leaving us, I want to make sure I get as much as possible. Uh, the bid that we've accepted is £59,000 that could increase. Going to see if any team is willing to pay more money up front and it maybe include a slightly bigger sell-on. I think regardless, though... My decision's kind of been made for me. I am going to sell our star player today. Okay, Watanabe annoyingly just immediately agreed to sign Vortis. So I've not even had a chance for other teams to come in. The transfer window is moving very, very quickly. I am going to take this bid. Uh, I think I have to. The percentage of sell-on is really good. The money up front is nice too. I have a replacement. Very unwork the space like, isn't it, to sell a key player. And usually I'd be like, I'm not going to sell him under any circumstances, but he's 22, Kamori is 18, and I think has the potential longer term to be a better player. And I just don't want to lose Watanabe for free. And given the current situation, I don't, just don't see a world where I can convince him to stay long term. He's in the last year of his contract with cashed in, could raise to £80,000. Can I sell the sell-on? Uh, sadly not. Uh, I don't know why I thought I might be able to sell the sell-on. Uh, it's not possible. Hopefully some of these clauses come in though and we get paid a little bit more money because uh, yeah, I still owe his university from when I signed him £9,000 a year.
Yeah, that £35,000 I spent on him, I, I only paid like 7000 of it. He's going to cost us a little bit of money for the foreseeable. I feel like at this point now, this scouting overview screen has just become like the single most valuable screen for me. I feel like there's more new players popping up here. This guy's very good. He's, he's very, this guy's great. I mean, the question, I suppose, is how much does Rio want? I mean, I might have to go, he's the Rio Ferdinand of Japan. Uh, I can promise a top half JFL finish. How much money is this bloke going to ask for? Our current highest earner is on £500 a week. How, how much is he going to ask for? 950 He's very, very good. But £950 here for Suetsugu is... It's, it's a lot. There were, by the way, some more players who popped it up here. Kayanoki, the left midfield option. He looks pretty good as well. Uh, he's very highly recommended by my staff. Is he going to be one of those players that has the outrageous demands or one of those players that has the reasonable demands? £300 a week for him. I've just told him he'd be a key player, which I can't necessarily guarantee he'd be. Of course, Nakajima has been our go-to left midfielder option. He does look a little bit better than Nakajima, maybe. Also, Nakajima is in the last year of his current contract, although he does, does want to renew it. No, no. Didn't think this was going to happen. Maybe I can get him to sign a new deal. Uh, I'll tell you what, we can definitely get him to sign a new deal, right? I'm going to sign Nakajima to a new contract, but I think I'm also going to try and sign this other bloke if I can. Uh, yeah, it's all action all of a sudden today. Two-year deal, optional one-year extension. That would be a good signing for Nakajima. I think the playing time was also lowered. That doesn't mean I'm not going to go in for Kayanoki here, who only wanted £300 as well. As of all the signings, I'm going to lock in the optional extension. Right now, I can only give players one-year deals, which is really, really annoying. So, yeah, just offering this optional year that I will always trigger is nice to secure players longer term. Hopefully, it's going to work out, unlike what happened with Masato. I'm a little bit worried. I'm signing very much better players this year with these optional clauses. When I trigger it, they're all going to cry like this guy. I'm looking at players by star rating. Either is the one in my staff now are kind of very mm, mm on. Uh, official terminology, by the way, mm on. Uh, if there is a good centre mid out there, maybe I'd go for them. Can we go here? Looked at him before. He's just not good, is he? My staffs are rating him really highly. He is not it. Football manager gods, I want a centre mid, please. Uh, preferably one who's actually good too. Uh, Kawago, who I just looked at, is the only player who's popped up who appears reasonable. Sorting by world rep. Is there anyone interesting here? Let's take a look, see. I'll tell you what, very underwhelmed. <laughs> very, very underwhelmed. I wasn't sure if this was going to be a two-part transfer special. I feel like based on me selling Watanabe and me realizing, hey, maybe there's the scope to find some really good players out there. I feel like I've just got to come back tomorrow now and add more depth and any bit of quality I can get for the starting 11, I will also take. Kayanoki here, who's the guy I'm looking at, he's had an offer from Sagan Tosu, who are down in J2 in the save game. They've been relegated. I need him to say the line, don't I? I? I need him to say the line. He's saying the terms are acceptable, mate. I need you to say this is a very acceptable offer. Like, I, I can't stress this enough. Just say the line. I'll, I'll give you up to £500. £500 what our top earners earn. I can't offer him more than that. C could give him more of a signing on fee. See, this is the issue with me pursuing that line. I know he's going to go to Sagantoso in J2 unless I can get his signature secured. And there's only so much money I can throw at him. And we are already reaching the realms of silliness. If he gets 30 goals or assists, I'll give him £12,000. And also, if you appear as an unused sub, you can have £100. He's still not super happy. Right, I'm going to bump the signing up on fee. I can't really put it beyond £10,000. Anything more than that is going to be silly. And I don't think I'm going to get the line out of him. But I feel like in making this offer, even if it doesn't work out and he ends up going to Sagantosu, I know I gave him the best possible contract offer I could. I just got really confused by Akai's new picture. I was thinking, who's this bloke? It's bloody Akai. He's changed. He's a new man. I don't know if it's a good thing or a new thing, but he looks happy about it. I feel like every time I come to this screen, there's just new players here. There's now a right back here. Uh, Motoyama. He looks quite good. Is he better than Mitsuhashi? I don't feel like he's like a crazy upgrade, but... No, he's not. He's not a crazy upgrade. I feel like the star rating has deceived me there. But yeah, this scouting recommendation screen, I need to keep an eye on it because there is constantly new players appearing. There's a goalkeeper here. Is he better than Matt Sizawa? 
Not as good in the air, much better at absolutely everything else. Sasaki, 22 Japanese player, was playing for Hiroshima University. How much does he want? He wants to be a star player. That always scares me slightly. Wants £400. It's a bit more than I want to pay him, but if he was willing to go to 300 may maybe? Maybe he wants 425 because of the clause I've just added in. 350 Sasaki, do 350 I did say, didn't I, I need a new goalkeeper. I don't know if Sasaki is the answer because I'm a bit scared about his four jumping reach. In fact, I'm very scared about that. Then again, I've not tried a small goalkeeper in years in Football Manager. Maybe they're good now. You know, maybe because everyone avoids goalkeepers with bad jumping reach, we don't know that they're good. I'm going to keep the transfer offer in there. That's not to say I'll definitely go with it. Also, Junpei Noda, this guy's very... Is this guy better? His polygon's more exciting, but eccentricity isn't necessarily a good thing. Just means he does mental things more often. He's got way better shot stopping, really good mentals. He's also 18, is Noda. He was playing at high school. That probably means he's going to have outrageous wage demands. I kind of want him. Noda. I'll finish top half. I'll make that promise to him. That could definitely hurt me. He wants a minimum release clause to teams in higher divisions and a release clause if relegated. <sighs> he's good. I don't feel like he's worth setting myself up for disappointment with a minimum release clause. Good. You know, there's certain positions where if you have the minimum release clause and it gets triggered, you're like, that's fine. I feel like goalkeeper's like the one position where you don't want to have players with release clauses. You don't want to have to unexpectedly suddenly need to replace your starting goalkeeper, do you? But look at every time I hit continue and just come back to this screen here, there's just new players that pop up that get me very, very excited. Well, I'm in the process of offering Jun Nakajima a new contract. I was a little bit worried that we weren't going to be able to extend his contract because he is one of our better winger players. He's got a concussion. Is that going to mean he's not deemed medically fit enough to make a decision when it comes to signing a new contract? Maybe I can make him a new contract that's cheaper and because he's concussed, he'll accept it. But that is also exploitative. So far today, by the way, there's Tractor Special. I've been recording for like over, uh, well, coming up to two hours actually, I think, at this point. There's quite a lot to it. I don't know how much you guys are going to have seen. I've got all these different scout reports going on. Jo Jopu's available. I know someone's thinking, why is this significant? This man was in my top five J Lee Japanese Wonder Kids video. This guy has really good potential in the game and he's got really good jumping reach. He's a bit like Akai, but obviously he's older and he's probably not going to reach that potential I just mentioned. Here he is, by the way, compared to Akai. Have we found the natural progression? Every year do I just sign a new target man? Jopu, how much do you want? He wants to be a fringe player. On £1,600 a week. Uh, since that makes absolutely none. I mean, the good news is here that when I'm looking at these players that were scouted, there are actually some semi-usable players here that maybe I'll have on my radar. Like I said, I've been going for two hours at this point. The season doesn't start until the end of March. There's still like seven weeks to make some transfer stuff happen. Last year, I had all my business done nice and early. So far already today, we've sold debatably our best player. Certainly our best player in terms of star rating. We've added in some pretty good players. But I still feel like there's loads more to do now. I mean, we might have a left mid, a centre-back, and a goalkeeper joining us. I just don't know if they're actually going to agree to sign. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, Kento, the centre-back who I like the look of, he signed for Sony. Okay, look, we didn't get the centre-back. Some good news. Nakajima, who is concussed, has signed his new contract. Uh, if anyone knows about Sony FC, though, please do let me know. Kayanoki is the one player who I want to find out today. Are we going to be able to sign? I've thrown the kitchen sink at this bloke, and I just have a feeling he's just going to go to Sagantosu regardless. I'd be shocked if we sign him. If we don't get him, it's not the end of the world. If we do get him, we can end today's episode on a high and party. Sasaki, by the way, who I've made an offer for, uh, Fukushima, I've just made an offer for him as well. Palmy's like, maybe I should offer him a bit more money. Then I see the four jumping reach and realize, maybe I'm not that keen on this guy anyway. I always knew that Kayanoki was a fan of kitchen sinks. Uh, he's turned down Tagantosu. He's turned down FC Osaka, who are in our division as well. Their media prediction is ninth. So for them to not get him is kind of big for us. We have a new winger. Uh, Jun Nakajima just signed a new contract. He might be finding himself on the bench because this 20-year-old I'm very, very excited to have. Has some crazy pace, crazy agility, really good first touch, some nice creative flair as well. I think he could really fit into our system out on the left-hand side. And also, Sasaki's accepted our contract. He has four jumping reach. I'm going to hit delay. Mission tomorrow, find a new goalkeeper. Going into today's episode, I said, you know, right mid and left mid, two of our best positions. We've signed a new right mid and left mid. 
You know, sometimes football manager makes transfer windows go in unexpected directions. There's a few new players in the team with Takagi. The players I've already mentioned in the wide areas, Yoshikawa as well at centre-back. And yet, the defence, the area where I thought we might need to strengthen the most, I've not touched today. Mm. No, know what we're doing tomorrow. Still getting to grips with transfer specials in Japan. Because the preseason's four months long, it's kind of tricky to record and know how it's going to all fit into the edit. So hopefully it's fitted into the edit nicely and you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, go down below, leave a like. We're back tomorrow. I need to add defenders. I need to add some defensive resilience. I think it's safe to say now we have options in the final third of midfield. Maybe a new creative player would be nice, but it's not necessarily top of the shopping list. Improving this defense the order of the day at uh, Matt Cesar in goal. No offense. I don't trust you. I will catch you guys tomorrow for more action here with Tokyo Rising. Until then, take things easy. It's me, Jack. Have a lovely start to your week and I'll see you tomorrow for more. I'm out.